On this week's XJ Talk Show, more good news is released about the upcoming Grand Wagoneer, and the Renegade is having some deja vu problems similar to those that delayed the release of the 2013 Cherokee. Aww. <laughs> There's voicemails to share, YouTube love to spread, and the peek into the mind of Diggy G. The Paps boys are doing a giveaway, and we have some upcoming interviews that we'll tease as well. I talk about my recent wheeling trip to Roush Creek and review a set of disco mud flaps on this week's Jeep product review. We cover some upcoming off-road events and a whole lot more on the next XJ Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Are you ready? It's the XJ Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And for First week in G. Well, more good news from Jeep regarding the Jeep Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer, rather. Things have never looked better for Jeep recently. After decades of turmoil, the company is fast becoming one of the most important and popular brands in the whole world. It had a record-setting year in 2014, selling 1.02 million vehicles worldwide, and the company is projected to double that number within the next five years. That's some serious, serious units being moved. Thanks in part to the Italian-built Jeep Renegade, the company is expanding into markets and segments that it never competed in before. And parent company Fiat Chrysler Automobiles has an ambitious five-year expansion plan to help Jeep reach its goals. Plan part of this plan involves moving the storied off-roading brand way up market and into dangerous waters, areas they really haven't treaded before. These are always a number of risks and an automaker takes when it moves up and out of its comfort zone. Will it be able to build a car as good as the competitors? Let's hope not, as I'd like to see Jeep as stay the iconic off-road and SUV manufacturer that it always has been. More importantly, can it convince buyers to spend the extra money on a nameplate that's unproven in the luxury segment? But Jeep is raising the stakes even higher and will christen its new high-end SUV with one of the most important names in the company's history, the Grand Wagoneer. By 2018, the iconic Jeep best remembered for its 28-year production run under four different manufacturers, acres of faux wood paneling, and ample chrome will be officially back. According to Bloomberg Business, the company is building the range-topping Jeep to compete in the emerging full-size luxury SUV segment against names like Range Rover and Mercedes-Benz. FCA Chief Sergio Marchione announced the Ultra Lux Jeep, and it sounded more like a declaration of war than a product announcement. When I see a Range Rover on the street, my blood boils because we should be able to do a thing like that, he said, and we will. Jeep halts production delivery due to software bugs. Again, I'm calling deja vu. The Jeep Renegade is a tough little SUV designed to tackle the roughest trails, allegedly. <laughs> For the moment, though, its toughest road is just getting to dealerships. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but seriously. CEO Sergio Marchion disclosed this week that FCA has been working around the clock to iron out software problems that have forced the company to stop delivering Renegade's to dealers. Aw, that really is too bad. The Renegade, which went on sale at the end of March, is a new compact SUV made in Italy. It looks like a bad rendering of a basketball shoe after a trip in the trash compactor and is just the latest in vehicles of the Jeep lineup to steal an iconic name badge. Marchion said the automaker is struggling with software issues similar to the transmission calibration problems that forced the company to delay shipments of the Jeep Cherokee in 2013. It's a combination of attributes to the vehicle, which is making my life horrible. It's really just a software issue. I swear, Marchion said. <laughs> in any case, we'll let you guys know what happens with the Renegade as time goes on. Hey, big thanks to all of you guys who continue to help me out each and every week by submitting stories to This Week in Jeep, especially guys like John and Jake, and of course, Steve. If you guys got something you think we should report on or you have a response to any one of our stories, please make sure to let us know by sending us an easy email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. You know, I was just thinking, Josh, the, the mm -hmm. whole, and I'm probably going to uh, bumble this, but the whole Sergio Marchione is getting a lot easier to say as more and more news stories, uh, uh, you do more and more news stories with his name in it. Yeah, and I, I think before... I was stumbling all over his name, and now yeah. I can pretty much say it in my sleep. <laughs> so uh, I also remember uh, Mike Manley. I mean, you there is no better name for an off-road vehicle uh, than Mike Manley. Oh, uh, yeah. No, Mike Manley. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm, I've seriously considered changing my name, in fact. but Josh Manley. 
<laughs> you know, I'm just going to steal Mike Manley. That's 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 solid. I think I would go with Lee as the last name and Man as the first name, and just you know, it'd be like Madonna Ooh, or Cher, like Stan, like Stan Lee, Stan Lee. Manly. It'd be Manly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that one. All right, well, that's enough of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, moving right along. XJTalk.com is where you go when you're not off road, and now you can go to XJTalk.com when you're off road too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJ Talk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well, anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one just sitting there listening to the XJ Talk show. Why aren't you a part of it? What? Tell me more, you say? Well, it's pretty simple. You can become an XJ Talk Show reporter. All you need is a smartphone and the ability to talk to people. Just email reporter at xjtalk.com for more information. So I thought I'd take a quick uh, quick stop here. We're not doing the Tammy T's. I uh, missed it out of the previous show notes, so that was, uh, that was my fault. Okay, so uh, Tammy, let's take a... A five-second uh, uh, stop. Uh, Are you ready for it? Yeah, Wrangler talk tonight. Yeah, okay. Let, I wait, 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 wait. Tell you guys about my little let's trip take, to Roush Creek on Sunday. Let, yeah, let's take a little uh, about a five-second pause, so there'll be a break in the oh. audio, and then uh, you go right ahead. Hey, Tony and Josh on Wrangler talk. In a couple minutes, I'll tell you about my trip to Roush Creek for a little off-roading I did this past Sunday. Oh, I'm jealous. I, uh, I'm, I'm getting the, I'm getting the bug. Yeah. I haven't been yeah, but, wheeling in a while you on the beach though. Well, <laughs> yes, but not in a vehicle, <laughs> not in a Jeep though. <laughs> yeah. It was more of a pogo. You did a different wheeling. kind of riding, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it was more of a pogo wheeling than, uh, than it was <laughs> an off, actual off road thing. So, uh, yeah, these, the, the jokes just flow out much like a uh, methane. Well, gas. I'm glad they didn't, uh, delve into the realm of airing down. <laughs> like that but uh well yeah. you got to do what you got to do to fit it in the garage am i am i right <laughs> <laughs> well guys he's tony he's known as mutter Roy over at xjtalk.com <laughs> i'm josh you guys know me as nw99xj or northwest 99xj and we've got tammy otherwise known as jeep mama tammy you go ahead <laughs> i'm just speechless um, I got a lot of videos up on my YouTube channel. You can check it out at the Jeep Mama on YouTube and my blog. I just posted on my blog about my trip um, this past weekend at JeepMama.com. Very good. And we are all over the interweb as XJ Talk Show. You can uh, find us on Twitter at XJ Talk Show or at XJ Talk. Facebook, Facebook.com slash xjtalk.page. We record the XJ Talk Show each and every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central. So make sure you guys are joining us live for each and every recording of the show. we got a chat room there at xjtalk.com, uh, xjtalkshow.com, rather, where you guys can join in <laughs> on other audience members, uh, just kind of poking wise and having some fun at uh, usually our expense. Yeah, if you guys <laughs> are having a hard time keeping up with the websites, so are we. <laughs> there's yeah, just, really. There's, there's so many of them, and they all start with XJ Talk. So, uh, yeah, but the, uh, the podcast, uh, the live show of the podcast, well, how does that work? We, we actually broadcast video on YouTube. So, you know, uh, what the hell, uh, we, uh, we put up a chat room, uh, built a barn and, uh, put on a show. So, uh, that's why we have, uh, the video and the chat at xjtalkshow.com. And then of course you can go to the forum, xjtalk.com and, and talk about your Jeeps, put pictures of your Jeeps. And, oh, I, I haven't mentioned this. We're actually getting quite a few. Uh, JK owners and uh, well, non XJ uh, owners uh, signing up over on xjtalk.com. And, and we really think that's great. Uh, I, you know, of course, the name XJ Talk would put off a lot of people that aren't uh, driving a Cherokee or perhaps they don't even like Cherokees because there is a bit of a rivalry between uh, Wranglers and uh, Cherokees. Shouldn't be, but there is. So, you know, um, it happens. Uh, but everybody's welcome over at xjtalk.com, which uh, I'm a member there. I'm an, an administrator uh, at that site, and you know me as Mutteroy. So please come over and say hi. Yep, doesn't matter what kind of platform you guys are driving. As long as it's uh, Jeep. Any, 
As long as it's a Jeep, right? We don't really have much of a Honda section there, do we? Mm-mm. No, the closest <laughs> thing we have is the KL. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but everybody is welcome. You do not have to have a Jeep to come over there and join in in the fun. Uh, I think you'll get more out of it if you have a Jeep. Certainly, there's people that have come and joined because they were thinking about getting a Cherokee, and uh, they came over and talked to us and figured that was a bad idea and did something else. <laughs> Went and got a Honda <laughs> Element or something. Oh, oh, boy. oh, oh, I was going to mention really quick. Did you know uh, I saw on uh, the Twitter today a, a local traffic Twitter. reporter? Yeah, the Twitter. Uh, they were making fun. Pat's boys were making fun of me about that last night. Um, but they, uh, um, Ferrari is now coming out with an SUV. Oh boy. And in the image that was posted of this red Ferrari SUV, it was in a rock strewn field indicating like it was an off road SUV. Oh yeah. No, I, I saw that. I mean, that was complete rendering, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> obviously photoshopped more than a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this thing looks, I mean, it very much looks like a Ferrari front end, but the rest of it looks, well, yeah, yeah like, no, a, it's, like a Air Jordan tennis shoe, like, <laughs> like a bloated warthog. <laughs> Would they keep the same engine in it and stuff? Uh, oh, I'm know. sure there will be, be an all new cool. drivetrain and everything. And it might have a V12. I wouldn't be surprised, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think, can imagine. I think there's a, fast yeah, I think the there's trails. a, I think there's a Porsche. Well, this isn't a trail vehicle. Um, it's just a, it, look at my issue from my Ferrari SUV. I can go off roading. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. Cause the mall is off road technically. Uh, well, right. speaking of off roading yes. guys, we have a four by four radio network completely dedicated to all that is off road. The XJ talk show, the four by four podcast center steer, muddy microphone podcast, and more are joining up and well, we've combined forces and have created an entire network. We'll be adding more shows to the lineup soon, and, well, podcasts are getting added each and every week as far as episodes go, that is. Mm-hmm. You guys can visit 4x4radionetwork.com and listen to all the great podcasts simply by pressing the play button. No special player to download, nothing like that, no sign-up required. All you got to do is show up and play. There's no better place to get all your 4x4 information. That's the 4x4 Radio Network, www.4x4radionetwork.com. Yeah, we like it over the 4x4 Radio Network. Uh, let's get over to some voicemails before Josh starts blinking the the text at me in the show notes. Hey, this is Tony. And this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. We want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Greetings and hallucinations. This is the Super Croc. Right now, my Jeep is outside in the rain, which is kind of normal. But unfortunately, it's missing, well, a couple of parts. I got my new window switch in. It was like, I found it on Amazon for like $45, which is awesome. And that's just got here today. But I had to change the water pump because it was leaking massively. And we ran into town and got the part, and we got halfway back, and we had a torrential downpour. So I'll have to wait till at least tomorrow to get that changed, which is kind of sad. So that's how my Jeep sits tonight. No water pump and the door taken apart. That's been for the last week or so, which is sad, but it'll get over it and putting new parts in it. It should be happy. Bye. <laughs> I think, Bye. I think, he, yeah, I think he's re- referring to the, uh, the, the control switch panel that uh, uh, works all the windows and the Jeep. And uh, so uh, 45 bucks, I guess that's not too bad. I didn't realize they yeah, had those on Amazon. I've, I've seen them easily three times that much. So, uh, Croc, you got a great deal, man. Yeah, it seems like I paid 70 bucks for mine from uh, uh, not Iron Rock. What was that place? Uh, Rock, uh, Rock, Rock Auto. Rock Auto, yeah. yeah. yeah I may be remembering source. wrong. It's been, it's been a while ago since, uh, since I bought anything. Uh, Tammy hasn't uh, had hers long enough to buy anything for no. it. It isn't new. 
Nothing. So here's our next one uh, from uh, Super Croc with uh, No K. Hey, guys. This is a Super Croc again. And I know last week or the week before, we were talking about recovery gear and what you needed in your Jeep. And there's a couple of things that that uh, we you need to remember that um, to bring along. And, well, first one is, and this one is probably the most important, and if you have nothing else, you definitely need that. And that is a deck of cards. <laughs> you in case you break down. Asking, why in the world would you bring a deck of cards? Well, it's easy. You start a game of solitaire, and then you play it for a while, and, you know, someone will always come along and say, hey, move that card there, put the four on the five. Hey, you've got an ace, you can put it up. Put the king on the queen. So then if you're stuck or need a hand or whatever, you, you can get out that way. Easy as pie. The other one is uh, light light stick batteries. You, you, you always want to have a few of those, and a quick charge of your light stick is always a good thing. I mean, then the calibrated grid squares, you got to calibrate them for your for your maps that you have. Uh, I know we talked about did we talk about maps, or am I just hallucinating? I don't know. <laughs> Could be. I think it's I heard that one here. before. Too yeah. wet. So you got to get them calibrated to your your maps. I mean, if you have Google Maps or Apple Maps, if you have Apple Maps, then you'll just go into either the nearest airfield or lake or river or your journey will inexplicably take you to Isengard, but that's a normal occurrence with Apple Maps, so don't worry about that. And then the other one that is somewhat less known about is a Frisbee. It can be used for multiple items. It can be used for a toy. It can be used for a plate or to dig yourself out or to dig your own grave. <laughs> Just stop. Bye. I think we well, need to get. Uh, I think we need to get Nikki G in here for uh, to translate. Uh, <laughs> in a roundtable discussion with Jensen and Nikki G, I think that'd be a good time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, hey, we got. Uh, I, we've told you guys we are all over the Twitterverse, and mm -hmm. uh, well, we've got some tweets that came in, and uh, of course, uh, in around the Wrangler Talk, we do have a, another website, a sister site called WranglerTalk.com. dot uh, com, and uh, well, we uh, we have the Twitter hooked up with that as well. And uh, we tweeted out, I had a horrible nightmare last night. This is from Wrangler Talk, at Wrangler Talk. I had a horrible nightmare last night. Everyone had to lift a lifted Jeep but me. I was driving a Honda. Oh. I, the thing is, is, I do have personal <laughs> experience with that, uh, except I, I did have a lifted Jeep before I had a Honda. So that's still. But the reply came in almost instantaneously, at Wrangler Talk. For me, it's not a nightmare. It's reality. Jeep is in the shop, and I'm driving a Honda for a loner. Big thumbs down. <laughs> so that was from Bob LeBeau, at LeBeau underscore four. Uh, Bob, thanks for taking the time to reply to us. Uh, we usually have insane meanderings all throughout the Twitterverse. <laughs> and, uh, well, one of them got picked up by Lucky You. And, well, of course, you guys can also join in on the Twitter fun by replying to any one of our tweets. And, of course, you can always uh, include us in other tweets with using the uh, the hashtag XJ Talk Show. Yep, yep. We sure appreciate people reaching out and touching us. And sometimes we touch back. So uh, we're going to be like it or not. <laughs> We're going to be doing a uh, playing an interview as a bonus segment this week, and it's going to be with Gene. Uh, he this is his first Jeep, and uh, it is a Jeep uh, truck, a 1965 J 3000. And here's some uh, bits and pieces of uh, of the interview to tease and entice you. I found out this is the only Jeep that you've ever owned. Yeah, it's the only Jeep I've ever owned. Um I did some light wheeling with a 93 Toyota SR5 that I'd picked up. Since it's a 1965 Jeep truck, I don't have to worry about smog. 
I, I like this aspect. You're driving a 65, so it's basically FU California. It had a few dings <laughs> in the body that I can easily work out, and uh, the interior was in, obviously in pretty rough shape, but uh, I'm more worried about the mechanical and get it mechanically sound at the moment. Oh, of course. Um, Any idea but, how long it had uh, been but since it last ran? 32 and a half years. I had a bright idea to check the compression and all the cylinders, and wouldn't you know, every single com- every single cylinder, the compression was great. So poured some Marvel Mystery Oil down the, the cylinders, changed the oil, let it sit for a few days, and then rebuilt the carburetor and cranked it over, poured some, uh, sprayed some starter fluid in it, cranked it over. And it, and it, and it what? Ah, uh, you'll have to listen to the interview to find out. <laughs> Dang. When, nice when little will this be on? <laughs> no, I swear that that Marvel mystery oil is something else. I mean, perfect, perfect example right there. Uh, but that is just an amazing story. No, I seriously cannot wait to hear the rest of this and how that turned out. Tony, when is that going to air? Uh, it'll be uh, like uh, we the show comes out on Monday, so the bonus segment will be out sometime around Wednesday, Thursday. Just keep watching your uh, the xjtalkshow dot com. Uh, of course, if you're subscribed on iTunes, it'll magically appear on your phone uh, or your uh, PC or Mac, and uh, you'll just be able to listen to it. So, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe on uh, iTunes or Stitcher, and uh, you'll it'll just be there magically as you're driving to work or bored at work or probably bored in the bathroom. So let's, let's just be honest about it. <laughs> but use headphones. People don't like talking in the bathroom coming from one stall. I just, you know, it puts them off. <laughs> <laughs> Speakerphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, now I had an opportunity to get with uh, the Paps boys last night. We uh, we shot a quick video about a, uh, a giveaway that they're doing. So let's, uh, let's hear it from them. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. We don't speak Canadian here. Okay. <laughs> hey, folks. I'm Clyde, and this is Tommy. Welcome to the Lot House. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> uh, it's great having you guys on tonight. Hey, you know, uh, I saw, saw a YouTube video uh, recently. Uh, what was that? Rough Country Revisited. And, uh, you know, there's some interesting things going on with the whole rough country saga. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we, we had some run-ins with, uh, the rough country warranty department. Didn't work out too well for us. We had some, uh, extended brake lines. uh, We're going almost on a year now. We, we had an issue with our brake lines. We installed them on our Jeep and within a couple of weeks, they failed us. Mm Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't any sort of, uh, insulation problem. It was, it was right where the, the coupling goes to the steel braided line where it's, where it's fitted in the right. factory. Right. I mean, and we give them the benefit of the doubt and we explain this in our video that, you know, these things happen, you know, sometimes a tooling machine doesn't work properly. So you guys well, actually got, actually re- resolved that issue by putting on a different manufacturer's uh, brake line, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the quality was night and day. Let's say that when <laughs> when we when we put the BDS brake lines on, like when, when we received them, we ordered them in, and yeah, I mean, I I know my hydraulic lines, and and these were a superior product. Now. I, a lot of people have been talking on the forums about how uh, Crown Corporation is, is the company that puts these things together, but I keep telling people, you know, it's it's like we both shop at the same butcher, but, you know, my meatloaf isn't going to taste like your T-bone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so you guys actually got that worked out, and I think you got it worked out with Rough Country, but uh, you guys need to watch the video so you can get uh, up to date on the whole rough country saga as i put it earlier but uh, you guys wound up with uh, some extra brake lines didn't you yeah. <laughs> well what happened is um eventually rough country did come back and and they yeah. they lived up to their word they sent us out a check saying that uh here you go we're, we're replacing what you had to pay for replacement lines um but because we didn't want to go with any of their other products and well the whole fact of the matter is the only reason why we got anything at all was because of our fans watching our channel Channel. and seeing things that we were doing. So we decided we wanted to give it back to them. So in our recent video, we 
bought the same brake lines that we use as a replacement, which was the BDS extended brake lines for the XJ. I think they're for the TJ and the YJ as well. Yep. And of course the XJ. We bought another set of those, but we only bought them so that we can give them away. So in our video, we leave a comment saying that if you want to win these brake lines, leave the best comment in the comment below. And that's it. Good yeah. luck. That's great. So just to be clear, you're not giving away rough country brake lines. You're giving away the BDS brake lines, but they were purchased, basically yeah. purchased by rough country. We don't want anyone, we don't want anyone around <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't, uh, <laughs> we don't want you to crash and die. We want you to stay there and, and keep watching our show and our videos. So I got it. Excellent, guys. Well, that's great. Where well, you could have pocketed that or, or bought uh, another case of beers with that money, I'm sure. Yeah, but we owe it to our fans. I mean, the only reason we're around is because people watch our videos. So kudos to you guys. Well, that's kudos. great. So you guys get over to uh, the Paps Boys on YouTube. And what exactly is that YouTube channel? It's the Paps Paps Boys Boys Roadhouse Roadhouse, uh, on YouTube. So uh, it's uh, YouTube forward slash Paps Boys, P-A-B-S-T-B-O-Y-S on YouTube. So get over there, leave a comment, and uh, maybe you'll win a case of beers. Um, No, no, I'm sorry, a a set of BDS brake lines. (laughs) (laughs) You pick up your own beers, man. (laughs) Yeah, you'll you'll be able to drive and get those beers safely with with these new brake lines. Thanks a lot, guys, and thanks for uh, being here on the show tonight. Okay. Yeah, cheers. cheers. I need to get a, a just a, a, <laughs> a constant case, a little mini fridge down here, a cooler of some tall boys, and uh, just pop one every time uh, we got the uh, the Paps Boys up on here. We hear their promo, something like that. Much love for the Paps Boys. In fact, uh, speaking of the Paps Boys, you know, on my vacation – I saw something uh, that reminded me of the Paps Boys. I had to record a small little video for it, and I just posted it up on my Google Plus. Uh, and so I'm sorry for uh, for those who are, are not friends with me on Google Plus or in my circles or however the hell that thing works. Uh, but the Paps Boys are, and that video is for them anyways. So uh, Paps Boys, uh, that video on my Google Plus is for you. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, it's safe for work. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, that was, uh, I believe, it's the first time I've actually uh, spoken to Clyde, and uh, certainly the first time I've uh, spoken with Tommy. Uh, and uh, we just did that real quick on Skype last night. I've chatted with uh, Clyde, I believe it was, uh, on uh, Facebook chat a number of times. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, that social media thing, uh, Josh, and I can't believe you mentioned Google Plus. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Watch that video uh, over there on the Paps Boys uh, channel. You should subscribe to their YouTube channel because... Great videos oh, over it's there. Just, it's just like Clyde and I were talking about. It's it's much more than just information. It's uh, hilarity. I mean, if it, that's a it's word... Not. It's not. It's <laughs> entertainment. It's info. Infotainment, as I like to say it. Yeah. Infotainment. The, it's, it's informational and it's, it's entertainment as well. It's good watching. If you haven't subscribed already... By the time you finish listening to this, you had best be subscribed to the Paps Boys. And of course, you got to tell a friend. Yeah. You never know where they're going to put stuff out because they're not like a weekly type thing. It's like uh, they uh, they yeah. spend time. They they have scripts. They have, they plan their shots, all kinds of things. So you get good quality video and uh, something fun to watch. So go over there and uh, and watch it. And speaking of YouTube, it's time for some of that YouTube love. Uh, something that we'd like to do to uh, say thank you to our YouTube subscribers. That's right, guys. The list is growing each and every week. We pull a few names out of the hat just to pay a little homage, give a little shout out to those who have taken the time to subscribe to us. And uh, first on our list tonight, no particular order. Who do we got? Jim Fulbright. Swear I've seen that name before. I think he's been in our chat room more than a few times. We've got Fat F Bomb Fabrications, and uh, the F Bomb has been replaced with a, <laughs> well, you guys can figure it out. <laughs> Uh Uh-oh. Tammy was typing, so I muted her. So, Tammy, go ahead. You're on now. Oh, God, I forgot to mute myself. Vermont Jeep Girl. And uh, James LeBlanc. If you guys would like to get in on this list and get a chance to have your name read on the air, well, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you head over to YouTube.com slash XJTalk and subscribe now. Make sure you tell a friend about that channel as well. Wow, we beat the music. 
never happens. Ah, and there was a little bobble there with. Uh, there was, even was a pause in there. I, I don't even know how this happens. This yeah. is this this is weird. We're in a some kind of a time zone. There's a uh, there's a black hole approaching the planet and uh, warping time and space as, <laughs> as we talk. <laughs> Stop that. All right, so let's uh, let's get over to the mind of Nikki G. I'm scared. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I just got to ask, how much sick time does uh, Josh get in a year? <laughs> it's amazing. It's like every other week he's off. <laughs> yeah. He's got sick time uh, and vacation but, uh, time. Somebody called in a couple weeks ago and said that their uh, Jeep was popping out of four low, which I think is ridiculous because I always want to lower your Jeep. Yeah, I'm recycling jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Josh gave a slew of answers uh, about bearings and forks and stuff like that, and uh, it scared the living crap out of me. Anything with five ingredients just sounds dangerous. But I was having the same problem with my Jeep, but uh, four low, it, it would kick out. And uh, one of the last things Josh mentioned was the linkage to the... Uh, transfer case. And so I go and meet there with a bunch of TV blaster and orange today and uh, sure enough loosened it up adjusted the linkage and uh, now it's working like a charm. So Outstanding. I took your advice sooner. All right gentlemen I will uh, chat you later. Oh, I just uh, knew he was going for a joke on that. I thought he was going to say the little, little, little link sausages or <laughs> I, something about lubing your rod. I don't, yeah, I, that, that could have gone any number of different directions, but he actually paid a compliment. What do you know? I'm good for something after all. <laughs> yeah, the medication's working. Yeah, right? Hey, this is Nikki G. And I uh, got a little bit of a break question this week. I uh, did a little bit of break work and um, it's all done. Everything's good. I'm down to the bleeding of the brakes. And uh, so my big question is, Neosporin. There it is. is. A good idea or <laughs> yeah. bad idea? And where do I apply it? All right, guys, I'll uh, chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. <laughs> this <laughs> has been From the Mind of Nikki G. Just when you Never think did. it's safe to go back in the woods. <laughs> good stuff from Nikki G. Love that guy. Oh, hilarious. All right. Well, uh, oh, uh, let's see. I think we've got a uh, an actual intro. Uh, now I just got to remember where I put it. Here it is. Oh, boy. Uh, now it's time for some, uh, uh, I shouldn't say this. Uh, it's just on the tip of my tongue. Now it's time for a little, uh, a, a little Wrangler talk with, uh, that's not bad, a little Wrangler talk with, uh, with Tammy, Jeep Mama. I was going to say a little Jeep Mama, which, you know, that always oh, upsets yeah. women. <laughs> Shut up and listen. <laughs> So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. (laughs) Shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. Hey, you know, Tony and Josh, one question people always seem to ask me is when are you going to lift your Jeep? Um, But I tell them soon, but first I want to become proficient driving my stock Rubicon on the green and blue trails at Roush Creek. Um, personally for me, I think this is the wisest choice for me because it's going to make me a better driver down the road. It's going to force me to pick my lines. And I think lifting my Jeep 2.5 inches and getting 35s will lessen the challenge for me on these trails and it won't make it any fun anymore. For me right now, it's exciting and it gets my adrenaline going. So little by little, I'm challenging myself with my Jeep Wrangler I create little objectives for myself, goals, or some would say um, my bucket list items. So this past weekend, I decided to pick one of those. And one of those objectives was to be able to tackle these blue trails at Roush Creek in my stock Rubicon. Um, I've already been on a lot of the green trails, which are the easiest trails at Roush Creek. But some of the blue trails are quite difficult for a stock Jeep. Um, as far as the clearance goes. But there are some that I can go through by going slow and steady. There's going to be some banging and and scraping along the way. So last Sunday, I trusted a fellow Jeeper to help guide me through some of those blue trails. And we picked a couple of the easier ones for my first time. 
But as I watched him ahead of me, he's lifted, go through these trails, and he maneuvered them so easy with his lifted Jeep, I thought, God, that doesn't look like too much fun. But I was having fun. And, um, you know, I think there needs to be some sort of challenge, which you definitely get in a stock Jeep. Um, I had a great time um, testing my limits and gaining the confidence that I need. Not the confidence in my Rubicon, but the confidence in myself, which I lack right now. Um, there's still that fear in the back of my head because it's my daily driver. I don't want to break my Jeep, and um, so I don't let my guard down. And one thing I realized out on the trails is I do not like water obstacles. You just can't tell what's lurking below the surface. Um, I posted a video on YouTube today about just this incident where um, I came upon a hidden rock that um, stopped me in my, tr my tracks. Um, I was able to tackle the tip top trail which is a blue trail where you go straight up and then you you know straight down you can do them both ways um it looks much scarier in person than it does on the video which i also posted on youtube and if you go to youtube and listen to the video you can hear me screaming in the background <laughs> um i can be such a scaredy cat but you know what i don't give up um, and there was also another video, which um, it didn't turn out, but you hear me screaming, can I close my eyes? And the two guys that were with me yelled in unison, no. So every time I'm able to tackle one of these obstacles, it improves my confidence. Um, and by the way, on some of the videos, I used my Kodak Quick Pro 360, and I totally messed up, and I had it in the fisheye view. Fisheye view does not work when you're off-roading up on the dash. You just basically see the trees and the skies. Um, so anyway, someday I do plan on getting a lift, a 2.5 lift and 35s on my Jeep Wrangler. I think I might go with the, the lift first and then the, the tires later because it's really expensive. But right now the green trails are still challenging to me. So I want to keep that challenge and leaving my Wrangler stock a little while longer is okay, I think. Um, I don't need to prove anything to myself or to anyone else by taking any chances. And I realize it's okay to take a bypass or just back up and not take the trail at all. And if I'm not comfortable with it. But there's another video of that on YouTube, by the, by the way, um, on my YouTube channel. And there's some other videos on my YouTube channel. Um, one, I accomplished a feat. I climbed this rocky step. It's a, a sea trail or a blue trail. Um, I was very impressed that I was able to do that. I didn't think I could, and I did. And I was able to accomplish more than I thought I could if I just had the confidence and relaxed, and that's what I had to do. So I'm looking forward to going out again real soon and tackling a few more of those blue trails. Tony and Josh? Yeah, you raised a, a several very good points there, Tammy. I'd like to just elaborate on slightly. There's there's always a, a big misconception that that a lot of people have as as far as how they you know how to build your Jeep and stuff like that, and and what happens when you do so and when to do it and all that stuff. And, and I've always recommended people, you, you get a 4x4 rig, don't buy a fully built, locked up, armored to, you know, front and back, you know, on 37s. You know, you're going to end up getting yourself in a, some real hot water real soon because if that's not your very first, I mean, if that's your very first four-wheel rig, um, you're, you're not experienced enough. You don't have the seat time, the wheel time. Uh, on on technical trails and stuff like that to to jump into a rig like that yeah sure you can learn and stuff like that and if you play it safe then you you play your cards right well you end up uh, you know working out all right I've always recommended people though is start small work your way up big because if you can navigate a small rig around and follow some of the bigger guys um, and and you've you've built up your rig to to you know be armored and capable and not big because big isn't always fun once you get no. up you know three, four inches, six inches of lift on a Wrangler, and you're in the 35s, 37s, even you know 38s and above uh, range, things get very, very easy on a lot of the trails that you would otherwise have had fun on. And what happens is, is you find yourself bypassing all of these other trails that you had normally gone on in the past and going straight for these, these insane obstacles, these black diamond, these, these super high rated trails and stuff like that. And you're just you know, you're, you're with a different group of people than, than maybe those who you started with, or you're instantly in the thick of things and you can find yourself in trouble well, very fast. And, and you may feel like you need to be in that, that area. Right. And you're not it, quite, yeah, you you're not really, up. you're not really ready for it because, uh, exactly. you know, everybody's going, oh, come on, you got this big, huge honking Jeep. Why are you over there on the kitty trails? You know, the, you know, so yeah, it's, I think it's a good idea. 
Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to you uh, lifting the Jeep and uh, getting a winch. So I think you'll, mm-hmm. once you have those two things, you'll be like, yeah, this is great. But you have to, you can't do it all at once. It's, it's good to experience it and look forward to It'll it. It'll make you a better wheeler in the long run. Trust yep. me. Well, I know a friend um, in Northern California has a lifted Jeep and he does the Rubicon Trail. He said to me he kind of envied me because, you know, kind of the, the thrill of it has gone out of it for him. Yep. Like when it, I mean, it, he still likes it, but it's just not as, as intense as it used to be. Oh, and I'll tell yeah. you a secret. Guys scream too, but we scream in our heads. It's really bad. <laughs> a little something called the pucker factor. And, uh, and it, it happens to all of us. <laughs> Eventually we'll get into a situation where it, it, oh, things pucker up really good. All right. Well, uh, Tammy, do you uh, have a Wrangler Talk segment to tease? Do you have a, a future Wrangler Talk uh, segment oh, that you, you've been I haven't thinking even about? Thought of that. You know, I have a bunch of ideas. I was going to look into. Well, that's you know, fine. I just thought you might yeah, may so have something. I know I, I have, I'm putting my feelers out this weekend. All right. Well, good. We'll uh, we'll uh, look forward to being surprised uh, on the uh, the next uh, Wrangler Talk Wrangler segment. Talk. Mm-hmm. I diddly ho, neighbors. Well, it's about time. Hey. I've been on vacation for seven days now. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm actually back from vacation, guys. It's uh, it's awesome. I had a nice little six day break, and uh, I tell you what, though, it's just because of my uh, probably my personality, the fact that I'm I'm half bat s crazy. Uh, by day six, I was ready to go back to work. Uh, which half? <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's not that I was running out of stuff to do by any means. It's just, um, you know, I was, I, I like what I do for a living and, uh, and I was, I was ready to go back to work. So, um, yeah, I was back and, and recharged. Boy, I tell you what, man, a vacation is just what I needed to, cause I was starting to get a little burnout. How, how far a drive was that for you? Uh, to where I was at from where I'm at now to Lincoln city is about, uh, is about two hour drive and Lincoln city is on yeah. the coast of Oregon. So it's a nice uh, little road trip. It's, it's fun it to get out and get on the yeah. road and just, uh, you know, travel out and, uh, you weren't doing any of that mental screaming. You just went out there and uh, went to the no. beach, right? Pleasant, pleasant drive. Yep. Up, up over the mountain and back down again and onto the wow. coast. It was, uh, it's, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I would have been screaming on the mountain to, roads though. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> It's 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 a really uh, really a pleasant drive, and you got a little chance to to navigate some some of 101, and did a little bit of shopping and stuff while you were down there, and uh, really just had a had a great time. You took the Honda, right? No, actually, we uh, we took Kylara's car. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah, we took uh, oh. and that's a uh, Toyota Camry, newer newer. Model. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask how many times the Honda was stolen, but uh, you took the yeah. Camry, so. No, but I do have a Honda story, and I'm very reluctant on telling it just because of the history of that damn car. All right, uh, but uh, but no, here it goes. Uh, so this is not last night. Night. This was this would be Tuesday night, and uh, we uh, was in the grocery store and doing some shopping. We came back and and uh, after being gone for for several days, uh, uh, you know the uh, the refrigerator kind of needed a cleaning uh, going through, as it were. So emptied out the fridge, and it's time to go. You know restock some stuff and off to the grocery store he went well get back out from uh, from shopping and uh, get out to the car and uh you know i've nosed into the parking space and uh and so you know load up the groceries and and go take the cart and put it away all yada yada get in the car to go away and to leave and uh and as soon as i start backing up i hear this horrendous noise what the hell is that so i get out and i circle around to the front of my car half of my bumper is laying on the ground mm. oh no literally from the license plate over was twisted 90 degrees cracked in like three or four different places and laying on the ground somebody had backed into or had, when they pulled into their spot or pulled out of it had misjudged whatever they had hit my bumper and from when it had been stolen last year, year before, whenever that was, um, uh, the uh, the crackhead who had stole my Jeep or Jeep uh, stole my Honda had ran it into a ditch, and uh, and the bumper was cracked. Now I didn't ever do anything about it because it really wasn't that big of a deal to me. Uh, this is an older car; hell, it's almost twenty years old, thirty years old. So it's uh, you know it's it's it doesn't need to look pretty, basically. So I never did anything about it. Well. It was a weak spot, apparently, and I don't know how hard it was hit. It wasn't like the airbags were deployed or it shifted my car out of the parking space or anything. But, uh, uh, but yeah, it was uh, my bumper was essentially in, still all connected, just 
in some pieces and stuff. There were some other things underneath the car that uh, some plastic pieces that got broken off. It looked like uh, some kind of a uh, a baffle or a muffler for the intake. I don't know what it was, um, but my car sounds a lot better now. That's all I know. But uh, no, in, in all seriousness, uh, I ended up having to tie the bumper up with the only thing that I had in the Honda at the time uh, to to get me back on the road, which was a headphone cable. And oh, uh, it was yeah, just long enough to wrap around and uh, and tie and hold the bumper up off the ground while I you know drove the uh, mile and a half back to the house. So I get back to the house and spent the next four hours mm-hmm. with uh, with burning paint and uh, and uh, and and melting plastic and stuff like that. And I basically plastic welded my bumper back together. And uh, I wouldn't say it looks good as new, but it's uh, it's definitely back together and running now. Uh, I've priced these out, and and I don't I don't have collision insurance on the Honda. I'll be the first to admit that it's it's. Uh, why would you, something why would you want to with 30 being 30 years old you know that's what i'm saying you know it's 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 not really high on the priority list right. so um i mean i get in a wreck i mean come on the chances are what has the damage has been done is totaled the car out so um uh, you know i'm i i can find, i looked on craigslist and stuff uh, a replacement bumper color match is like 140 bucks it's not that big of a deal so right. um and it's, it's working right use. now yeah, it's for a great stock on the Rubicon, Honda. though. Oh, that would be cool, Josh. <laughs> With enough zip sharp. ties and duct tape, I swear I can get <laughs> that bad boy to fit. No, so yeah, that's a that that that's an interesting way to to end my vacation, as it were, um, to uh, to deal with that. So well, yeah, at least was it was fun. at least you were done with the vacation and back, and that's like karma's yeah. punishment for for having a good time. And uh, you know you gotta you gotta expect that uh, from karma from time to time. I, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've had a great vacation and a great week. Well, I've got something for you. Yeah, here, yeah, you, go. here you go. Bend over, big boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll just jump in here real quick. I don't really have uh, a lot to report about on my Jeep, which is a good thing. You know, I've been, uh, uh, pardon the pun, sweating the uh, over uh, the running hot on the freeway problem here for a number mm-hmm. of years. And uh, ever since I got that engine watchdog uh, LCD temperature display, I don't sweat it anymore. Uh, it gets over there to the uh, first notch past 210. And on, a, on occasion, it's actually uh, jumped over to the uh, 250 degree mark on the gauge. And, uh, you know, I just have that little thing, a uh, little display, and I can see the, the real temp is 217 degrees. And I just uh, flip off the, uh, the gauge and keep on driving. Uh, I, uh, so I regularly, now that the, the temps are getting into the, uh, upper eighties, uh, here in the Houston area, uh, I, uh, I, I regularly, I hit that first notch past 210 and I'm not going to even, uh, hazard a guess as to what it's supposed to be because the, the gauge is not linear at all. Uh, so, uh, and I have not done the, uh, the little volume control on the, um, the sensor yet, but I, I still plan on doing that. Uh, basically adjusting uh, the resistance coming from the uh, temperature sending unit uh, that's there in the th- uh, the thermostat housing and uh, getting that thing back down to where it should be. And I don't know if that's going to <clears throat> improve the, the overall accuracy of it, but it certainly won't be showing me uh, well over 210 degrees uh, like it has been doing apparently for a number of years. So... There you well, go. that'll be interesting. I, 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 I know you've uh, you've picked some of those little potentiometers up, and uh, I'm going to be curious to see uh, how how easy that is to implement into the system, and and whether or not it's uh, it's it's going to work as well as it at least on paper should. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just two wires. It should be very simple to yeah. uh, to, to split one wire and uh, put the little thing in there. I was thinking about putting a switch in there, so uh, if I'm out on the road <clears throat> and I don't have a soldering iron and a bunch of other crap. Uh, I can just uh, flip that switch and bypass the, the the resistor in case the computer gets confused or doesn't like it or uh, under the heat of the uh, in the engine bay that uh, uh, that little volume control uh, loses its ability to keep the uh, uh, the correct uh, resistance and starts jumping around uh-huh. and the computer doesn't like it and I get stranded someplace simply because of the stupid uh, thermostat uh, uh, sensor. But, uh, oh, I did do one thing uh, on my, yeah. my five, five days off. Uh, it's kind of sad, actually, because I only did the one thing. Um, but there was a lot of flooding in Houston, so it was a lot of fun to watch TV uh, during those five days off. But anyway, uh, I uh, wrapped my... Um, uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. I wrapped my steering wheel with uh, paracord. It looked really oh. good. I had talked I about it here on, 
that. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Not, not surprised it looked good. I just didn't get in my head what it was going to look like when you first mentioned it. Yeah, I had actually shown the uh, the paracord colors up on uh, a previous show. Uh, maybe it was last week that uh, we're, it was the, when Josh was on vacation. Yeah, yeah, figures. I miss all the good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, I put up some pictures on uh, xjtalk.com dot com and uh, also uh, various social media, the Facebook, the Twitter, all those things. And uh, it it looks brighter than what it actually is. I went with darker colors, you know, because you're going to have your hands on on that paracord, and the oils from your hands, or the, even the grease from working on the Jeep, is is going to work its way into that paracord. So, uh, but uh, I think the flash from my uh, my camera made it look much brighter than what it is. Just driving around, it doesn't look like that. It it it's actually quite pleasant. It has a it's very strange because I had a cover, one of those Walmart covers, on there. And it, the steering wheel was much bigger with that thing. Now that I have the paracord on there, uh, and I did not remove the center, uh, the center strands from the paracord, like some people uh, talk about doing because they're concerned about it getting too too fat. Uh, this is actually much uh, smaller to hold on to, uh, and uh, kind of uh, has a nice pleasurable feel to it with the, the cord. Good. It's very solid, mm. very solid feeling. So. Uh, it worked out really well. So if you guys have been thinking about uh, wrapping your uh, steering wheel or your aging leather covered steering wheel, I have thought about that, and I've I've got a question about it because I, I've I've look I've I've worked on hundreds if not thousands of vehicles before, and I've seen some some cord wrapped steering wheels that that have been wrapped for a number of years, and they kind of start to stretch, and you'll get kind of a loop that hangs out. You'll get some separation and stuff like that. Interesting. What is, I mean. It, I don't know the process of it. I'm looking at some of the pictures right now on xjtalk.com, and it looks really, really cool. But the only reason why I've never done this, and I've seen some really cool versions of this before, um, is that I, you know, in two or three years from now, uh, you know, is it going to be all stretched and pulled and looked all weird and everything like that? What are your impressions as far as the longevity of this? How? What do you think it's going to be like in another couple few years? You know, um, your guess is as good as mine. It might be better right. because I've never seen this. I've certainly never done it before. Uh, but I look at it this way. It is. Uh, it was time consuming because uh, I didn't just wrap it. Uh, and if you if you look uh, right there where the controls are uh, for the uh, the um, uh, cruise control and whatnot. I actually went through a process of wrapping that air, that area of the steering wheel, which most people don't. They just wrap it down to where it gets to the, the little part that attaches to the steering wheel, and they go around mm. that or stop there and then jump over uh, two inches and keep wrapping. I didn't like that. I wanted the whole thing covered. So I actually uh, uh, thought of a way to actually get the, the wrapping uh, on, on uh, around the entire steering wheel. So uh, I, I just say keep it tight and... Worst case is you can uh, redo it, redo it, or even just yeah. redo a segment. Uh, I so think the color rough, probably wouldn't wouldn't match, but roughly, uh, let's give a rough estimate as far as the linear footage of how much paracord is required. Two hundred feet. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. It's, if you don't a get a lot of, if you don't, get, if you don't get two, yeah, if you don't get two hundred feet, uh, you're going to be really sweating it. I have some left over, but. I don't think it's more than 10 or 15 feet. So I, I got to ask, I mean, you, you, you got to have a uh, master's degree in seamanship knots in order to pull something like this off as far as, you know, difficulty of install level. It, it does not uh, hurt uh, having some, uh, um, some knowledge of semen. Uh, so the, uh, it was real easy to do. Uh, <laughs> come on, Josh, you can smile. Not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> If you can put a knot in it. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it uh, it was very very simple. I mean, you know, you see this this uh, this pattern that that you get with the little thing that's, up, that's on the inside of the wheel. That's just simply a loop, and then you run the cord through it. You just got to remember to run the cord the same direction every time. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. You know, ah. you want to make sure it looks the same. And when you run it through that loop, and then you just bring it back around, and then make a loop, and then uh, run it through. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, uh, the reason why it just took so long was because it was a lot of pulling cord, you know, 75 feet of cord or whatever it was. Uh, Imagine pull, 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 yeah. pull, wrap around, pull, pull. And the, and the paracord likes to knot up. Uh, it likes to grab other paracord that has nothing to do with the paracord oh, that, that you're using. So <laughs> you're pulling gray paracord, and here comes the red. 
So, uh, and, and if you guys, oh, and it's real simple to make the transition between colors. Uh, you just Interesting. stick a little bit uh, of, uh, of what's left over and then include that in the wrap. You just have to hold it with your finger until it's tight. And then, mm. you know, so uh, it's very easy to transition that stuff. It's very easy to do the loops. Uh, in fact, uh, there's some, some other kinds of uh, uh, knots, I guess you could call them, that you could do that are very intricate uh, that... Uh, I didn't want to try. I figured I would just do this loop thing, but there's like hash patterns and all kinds of crap that you can do that uh, looks like a jumbled mess. I was looking at it on YouTube. It looks like a jumbled mess, and then you you pull them all tight and stretch it out, and then pull it tight, and boom, you got this thing that looks like uh, Yeoman Rand on Star Trek. There's a timely yeah. reference. <laughs> Let's say it before Josh does. <laughs> so, uh, Tammy, you had some damage out on the trail, didn't you? Oh, yeah, right. Right when I put um, the Jeep into four-wheel low, bang. There, I just lost my shifter knob. It came loose, and I pulled it right off. Oh, no. no I know. <laughs> she so, says I mean, she has trail damage from Rosh Creek. And I'm like, oh, my God, tell me. She goes, well, let's, you'll have to wait. And then I found out later, the knob comes off. <laughs> yeah, so I just have to, the set screw just came loose. So, But anyway, it was, it was a good teaser, though. I got people oh, to, to listen. Quick. Get a tow rig. We need a recovery gear over here. <laughs> but the funniest part was we pulled up and we got there like about an hour after everybody gets there because you have to wait in line to check in. And we just, you know, we we walked right up to the window to check in. And there's this guy there. He's he's new and um, you can't go out on the trails there by yourself. So the lady at the desk said, hey, do you mind taking this guy with you? And we're like, sure, no problem. We're just you know, going on some green and some easy blues. And he said, sure, sure. So later I found out when he was sitting there waiting, he had been waiting for a while because not many of the, the groups were going on any of the easier trails. And so when he saw us pull up, he saw my stock um, Rubicon. He's like, yes. And then he saw my license plate and he got even more excited because he just bought um, a stock sport two months ago. So this was his first time out. And so when he saw my license plate, Jeep Mom, he's like, oh, yes, this is going to be an easy one. So he was like all excited because he knew I was a, a wimpy um, trail rider, which is what he needed. So why was he going with you again? Because you can't ride um, the trails alone. You have to go in a group of two or more. And he oh, drove up I there see. by himself. Oh, I got you. So he, he wasn't you working to there. I thought, find another group to go with. I thought they actually yeah. had somebody that was working there and would ride along with you. And I'm, I'm no, thinking, no, no, no. maybe, came, maybe I'm sorry, I, don't, I didn't tell the story very good. I he may not listen right. With his new, I mean, he used to go off roading before a long time ago with some other vehicle, but this was his brand new stock. Gotcha. Um, sport. So anyway, when he saw, you know, my stock Rubicon with Jeep mom plates, <laughs> you know, he knew, oh, this is going to be easy. This is what, that's what he was looking for. But it was just funny how he got excited about it. Yeah. I he can, didn't I know me that. personally, but. Oh, I figured he, he probably just didn't tell you. He was all shocked because he's been reading the blog and yeah, bought his Jeep because of it. He's and, like, oh my God, it's Jeep mama. It's Jeep mama. Oh my God. Give me a, give me a, uh, an autograph. So, uh, yeah, I was just thinking, I, could, I wouldn't like that if you had to pull up before you go on a trail, some sweaty guy that, uh, you know, you didn't bring your extra deodorant stick had to, uh, yeah. here, put this on. Ride with you, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I was like, ooh, grody <laughs> when you were talking about that. But it makes no, more actually, sense No, actually, he's now. really nice, and he lives pretty close to me, so we might be able to go out again with him. Now, you were you were supposed to meet a couple of guys up there in uh, their own rigs, weren't you? Did they not go? Yeah, I met, no, I met... Um, Brian and his wife came up. So it was just Brian and his wife and myself. And then um, Harvey was there and we went with him too. So it was just three of us. So did you give the kid uh, some uh, some pointers? Did you tell him, uh, you know, uh, don't go over the rocks without a, a spotter and uh, 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 don't grab that knob with as much force and ferocity because right. it, it might come off in your hands? <laughs> no, actually he was helping me. Um, a lot. We well, we ha both helped each other. I guided him through some stuff, and he guided me through some stuff. How did cool. you do as far as uh, being? Uh, did you did you know what to do whenever? Because I don't know what I I don't know. I wouldn't know what to do. Hey, there's a rock. You're gonna hit it. Watch it. Okay. No, you just you know you just make sure he's going over the right part of the rock. You know, because you, when you're inside the driver's seat, you know you can't see it as well. There is a, uh, I don't know, I think it's not the F-22. I think it's like F-23 or something. Uh, it might be a YF uh, uh, 
aircraft, but they have a heads up display in their helmet. And with the sensors and the cameras, they can actually look through the the aircraft that they're flying That'd in. That'd be cool. So, mm. so, so they could look down through the bottom and that they can keep eyes on any threats, even if they're, uh, you know, if the airplane's in the way. So I'm thinking we need to develop an XJ Talk helmet system that allows you to see straight through the XJ. You know, maybe maybe a little overlay where you can actually see it. You know, it might even be cool. You could tell if a cylinder is running hot or, uh, you know, what part of the engine is, is a little warmer right. than the other. But also, to be able to see through the rocks. I think that'd be really cool. Well, well I know uh, the, um, the Kodak Pix Pro camera I have, it's uh-huh. hooked up to my phone. And that's how I operate it. And you can see the picture in my phone. So you could actually put the camera on the front bumper or even down, you know, like somewhere in the, the front tire so you can see where you're going on your Now, ordinarily, phone. I don't like to boast about another vehicle <laughs> manufacturer's technology, but uh, this is really cool. Um, something you guys just do a quick Google search for Range Rover Transparent Hood. And this oh. is a, an HUD and a heads-up display system, um, which uses, uh, I believe, some strategically placed cameras and stuff to uh, superimpose the terrain that would otherwise be underneath the vehicle um, over, basically, over the hood and allowing you to essentially see through the front of the vehicle as if there was no That's front cool. clip on the, on the car. So that's about a 54-second video. You guys can find it uh, on YouTube um, Range Rover transparent hood. Yeah. Pretty neat technology as far as uh, off-roading goes. It'd be cool to see if they uh, made a, uh, uh, sort of a retrofit, uh, all in one, you know, works on any vehicle type of, uh, system of that. Oh, real quick. I mentioned the flooding in Houston and there was a, you know, a lot of the nervous Nellies talking about don't go in the water. Uh, what was it? Uh, turn around, don't drown was the big thing that they were saying, uh, here in the, in the Houston area, and it just it just grates on my nerves because it's more the p- pansification of of Americans and and you know do what the government tells you type stuff. But anyway, I don't want to digress too far. Uh, I, one of the uh, one of the tweets I made on the Twitter was uh, I never go I never I, I put a fish finder in my Jeep, and anytime I'm going to approach deep water, if I see fish, I know it's too deep. Yeah. Where is that? No, oh, that's a drum roll. Uh, but I'm bummed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, What's next, Josh? What, what do I say? Well, what I every say? other that's week, <laughs> <laughs> every other week, Tammy reviews a Jeep product and shares her insights on its relevance to you as a Jeep owner and an off-road enthusiast, its use and its performance as well. Uh, Tammy, what do you got for us this week? Well, first, we're gonna do the uh, the four x four radio promo. We should. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Now we can hear the review. (laughs) Um, Well, last September, I took uh, one of my, the 201 off-roading class, and there was a Jeep in front of me that had stock Jeep mud flaps, and they were these plastic mud flaps Mm -hmm. right on the ends of the back tires and I cringed every time she drove over the rocks because you could see it pulling up and scraping the rock and at any Mm. moment I thought for sure they were going to get torn off and actually Kyle who works at Roush Creek says it happens all the time where these stock mud flaps just get ripped off by the rocks and um, I wondered why she just didn't take them off and later I learned that some states have mud flap laws even for jeeps and I was like wow I had no idea None. Washington is one of those. My neighboring state, uh, in fact, a couple guys I wheel with on a regular basis have gotten mud flap tickets. Now they're just some chicken s tickets that you know I think right. it's like seventy five dollars, a little fix it ticket or something like that. But uh, but nonetheless, yeah, you're right. I think California has um, mud oh, flap boy. laws too. Yeah, they got so everything. anyway, when you go off roading, I mean, what does one person do with the states that require you to have Jeep mud flaps? Well, grdproductscompany.com has the answer, and they asked me to test out their quick disconnect mud flaps for the 2007 and 15 Jeep Wranglers. So they sent me a pair of these Jeep accessories out to try my Jeep, and I the parts came. Packaged awesomely, if that's even a word. 
Um, they were just really well packaged um, with two splash guards, all the necessary hardware, a sturdy bag to even carry your mud flaps when they're disconnected. Um, the install was pretty simple and quick. Um, the only tools I needed were a 5 a socket and ratchet and a screwdriver. So first I attached the two flap mounting brackets with the washers, nuts, and screws that came with the kit. And I attached them together and then I located the bracket that attaches the rear bumper to my frame. I removed the two bolts on the bumper, then I inserted the hard mount in with the mud flap between the bracket and the, and the bumper. Um, and I um, have some pictures of this on my blog, by the way. Um, then it was time just to tighten up those stock Jeep Wrangler unlimited bolts and it was easy peasy. And so then now when I want to go off roading and all I need to do is just pull out the little, um, there's a little bar that you just pull it out and the whole mud flap comes off and you just put them in your little bag and you carry them with you. Um, so anyway, the splash guards will come in handy for that muddy ride home so you don't have to worry about splashing all that mud um, behind the cars behind you um, or a wind a rock flying out of your tire and breaking the other person's windshield. So the GRD quick disconnect mud flaps are $89.99 for two mud flaps. They fit the back wheels um, and they, they can fit with modifications as well. They come with two mount brackets, two flap brackets, three clips. The clips are to um, secure the mud flap on when you're driving around with it on. Um, six washers, six bolts, six lock washers, six nuts, and one Jeep mud flap storage carrying bag. And I think if I had to have mud flaps, um, these are the ones I would get. They're easy to install, and you can just pull them on and off when you need to. And they look pretty cool. They are available for not only the YJ, but the TJ, and of course, the JK as well. Unfortunately, not for the XJ, not surprised there. But guys, this design is pretty awesome. I would think if there's an engineer out there listening uh, and they got a mind like me, well, you're already thinking about how to adopt this idea to work on your Cherokee. I don't think we I'm should sure encourage the law. I don't think we should encourage the lawmakers to come up with mud flaps. We ought to do the Microsoft thing where you can't pull out Internet Explorer out of Windows because it'll break it. So you can't have mud flaps on a on a Jeep because it'll break it. Yeah, well, uh, see, I need a little more. Uh, yeah, yeah, not just uh, that'll never fly. Well, look, I, I I've gotten. <laughs> So here's the thing. We don't have mud flap laws here in Oregon, but we do have fender laws here in Oregon. Yes, yeah, so and do we. I, yeah, so uh, my tires stick out a little farther than my fenders do. Well, mainly for the reason that I don't have any fender flares. Uh, so tube fenders are on my on my radar, but uh, but nonetheless, I've gotten one of these chicken s tickets because a cop said, "Well, your your tires are sticking out entirely too far." So uh, here's a nice fat ticket for you. And, you know, thank you, Mr. Ossifer. That's just awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things. Bigger tires, you kind of got to get rid of the fender flares. You got to figure something else out. Uh, tube fenders, obviously an option for our Cherokees, uh, Bushwhackers, uh, Napier, all that sort of stuff as well. But for those who don't have those laws, but you do have the mud flap laws, this is an outstanding option uh, for some quick disconnect mud flaps. Just the whole concept of quick disconnect mud flaps, I think is awesome. Yeah. Anything you can use to, to take them off road is, uh, is a great thing. I wonder if, if nobody's come up with the idea of actually swinging them up, swinging them up and latching them kind of like you do with the sway bar disconnects. Right. Mm. You know, because the, the, I know some sway bar disconnects, you have to pull the things off and keep up with hardware and put it back on. Uh, I got the kind that uh, just swings up and, you know, you pin it up high out of the way. Right. And then, you know, you're disconnected. Do you, I, I can't remember, Tammy, do you have sway bar disconnects on yours? Oh, yours is automatic. That's right. That's the magic button, the $10,000 button. Yeah. Don't yeah. talk to me about being a newbie <laughs> and uh, not having uh, the, the, the niceties of a uh, lift and everything. You, you've got lockers and a bunch of crap on there that and you know what? I, I still, still don't have. I still have not used my lockers yet. Well, that's good. Wow. I, I would have had to try them out though. Blue trails at Roush Creek and you didn't lock it up once. I'm impressed. Yeah. Nice job. Thank you. Nicely done. All righty. Well, <clears throat> let's get over to Wheeling Where. Well, this is where we talk about what events are coming up in your neck of the woods and, of course, around the nation. The Grand Mesa Jeep Club presents Rock Junction. Three days of wheeling in the West, starting each day in Grand Junction, Colorado. You pick from the scenic trails to historic Jeep trails to the hardest of the hardcore. 
huge barbecue each and every evening, and the week ends with a Rocky Mountain Off-Road Expo at the Mesa County Fairgrounds. All happening June 3rd through Friday, June 5th down at Grand Junction, Colorado. For more information, head to gmjc.org. On June 9th, Badlands Off-Road Adventures is hosting a winching clinic. This is excellent, guys. If you have never pulled the cable before or you uh, frequently head out with a girl or a friend and, uh, well, you want to have a good spotter with you, somebody who uh, has got the skills to get you out of a situation, you need to go to this event. June 9th, Mojave, California, Badlands Off-Road Adventures Winching Clinic. For more information, go to 4x4training.com. And the big one, Four Wheel Parts, putting on the Truck and Jeep Fest, June 7th through the 8th, Ontario, California. You don't want to miss this one, guys. Huge event, lots of fun. This is essentially an off-road mecca event. Fourwheelparts.com for more information. Well, that's it for this week, guys. If you've got an event coming up in your area, well, let's get the word out. Whether it's a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, a fundraiser, or a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari, let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. Well, summer's coming up. You know there's got to be a lot of events coming oh, uh, yeah. coming down the pike. Definitely. and uh, uh, We want to hear about it. Let us uh, let us know so we can let everybody else know, and maybe you can get more people to your event and um, more XJs. Yep. I've got a few off-road events coming up here in the next month or two, so I'll be uh, telling you guys how you can get out in my neck of the woods and come say hi to me and, uh, well, other Northwest Jeepers as well at some upcoming events here in my neck of the woods. Oh, so this stay, beautiful, stay for that. beautiful country out there, Josh. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's a times. shame there's so many liberals out there. They don't deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> All these crocs and granola eaters. Yeah, no. Not, not you, well, Super guys, Croc. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Guys, anybody can do an interview on the show. We've got uh, an example of that earlier on when we teased uh, about an interview with a guy in his uh, FSJ3500. Can't wait to hear more about that. Uh, We'd like to hear more about your Jeep and maybe your recent wheeling adventure like Tammy just had. Uh, Give us a call. Let us know about what you have going on with your Jeep. 530-675-4102. We'll figure out how we can get you on the show and talk about your Jeep. Yes, yes. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, You will uh, have an opportunity later this week to listen to the interview with Gene and talking about his J3000 from 1965. And it's hard to believe uh, the engine had not been started for 32 years. And it was, well, you'll just have to wait and find out what happens. (laughs) I'm sure sure there's a smoke show involved in there somewhere. But uh, guys, head over to our Facebook page. Please check that out. Facebook.com slash XJ Talk page. Of course, YouTube, we've given you guys that link as well. Um, Wanted to give you that phone number one more time for our 24-7 voicemail line. Got to get you guys to call in each and every week. 530-675-4102. We can always use our speak pipe feature over at xjtalkshow.com where we encourage you guys to join us each and every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central for the live show. Get it in just under the bell. And Tammy, where can people find you? www.jeepmama.com. Lots of pictures, lots of great information from, uh, and I hope you don't mind me saying, a newbie jeeper. Uh, yeah, nope, and uh, she's learning and asking questions and uh uh, that's one of making the, mistakes. Yeah, that's one of the great reasons pulling knobs off left and right, uh, like it's going out of style, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, that's one of the great things about having her here because uh, Josh and I have a little bit more experience, and we uh, uh, we get the the questions from Tammy that we don't even think about. Uh, you guys might having uh, the questions for us. so you guys have a great Jeep week, and thanks for joining us. Did you just Good say night. I have experience in yanking knobs? Was that you or me? <laughs> That was me. Yeah. I, I, I can see that. I don't want to see that, but I can see that. <laughs> Good night, everybody.